Hello there, welcome back to the new video. Today in this video, we'll be talking about a paper from Harbin Institute of Technology, Bihang University and Microsoft Research Asia. The paper is titled as Layout LM, Free Training of Text and Layout for Document Image Understanding. So the idea of the paper is around the topic of document AI or document intelligence, where the authors are trying to propose a free training mechanism for understanding and parsing documents in a little more effective way by incorporating not just the textual part of it but also understanding the layout information that the document entails so before moving to the actual method to what they propose let's start with the abstract first but before that if you're new to this video make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel also feel free to share it across with your friends and on social media to whosoever might be interested and yeah all of this is free so do not hesitate <laughs> okay cool so authors say pre-training techniques have been verified successfully in a variety of nlp tasks in recent years Despite the widespread use of pre-training models for NLP application, they almost exclusively focus on text level manipulation while neglecting layout and style information that is vital in document image understanding. So yeah, that's pretty true because all the language models that you see, right, whether it be BERT, Roberta, Pegasus, T5, any of this stuff, all of them essentially work under a similar logic of creating a self-supervised environment where they would kind of mask out couple of words in sequence or at random and that's what they would want to credit at the output end so everything that we're trying to do is mostly dealing with just the textual part of it but again as the author says as we go beyond understanding just the text and we would want to parse let's say a resume where you'll have an image you'll have person's name phone number then academic qualification and then let's see you have achievements as in the column section over here so there is a certain layout information that also should be incorporated when you're dealing with documents that have rich layout information another example could be let's say if you're trying to understand a bill so you'll have items you'll have amount you'll have the vendor name you'll have a signature so here again you would want to kind of understand what's the usual layout under which the information is usually put down otherwise what will happen is if you pass let's say this document through any text extraction tool let's say apache Teka you'll just get a plain text with little noise also over there and it would be really hard for you to later on associate the actual text with its category over there so for example if i say that this is the first achievement second achievement and these things were there somewhere over here let's say this is the first one this is the second one now later on as a post-processing step you should be able to classify it and say okay we have an achievement section and this is one element in that array this is second element in that array so yeah creating such mapping becomes really difficult if you're not taking into the consideration the layout in which the document was already laid out so yeah that's the novelty that this paper talks about okay so yeah, that's what they say layout lm jointly learns model interaction between text and the layout information across the scanned images that you have which is useful for information extraction Apart from this, authors also incorporate image features to their respective words and try to put in information like style, font and all of this with respect to how it actually looks in the document so that it gets better supervision overall to understand what that word looks like when it comes to seeing the actual document. Until 2020 and 2021, this was state of the art. Now they have released a newer version of this, which is Layout LMV2, which is again more or less similar to what We'll be talking about today in this video if you guys want me to make a video on that as well do let me know in the comment section okay so moving further to the actual architecture so they use the same training strategy to what bird does which is by masking a token from the input end and then predicting that towards the output similar is what they do so they consider these five types of embeddings which is the text embedding followed by the position of that text, the starting x and y coordinates and the ending x and y coordinates of the bounding box where that text token actually occurs in the document. So for example, if this is a document, this would be x0, y0 and this would be x1, y1. And let's say here we have written paper. So if this is the bounding box, then capturing all these four things is what we have written over here, followed by the actual text embedding, which they initialize using the base model of the bird. So once you have this, you mask some X amount of words from the input and that is what you would want to produce at the output end. Although in this case, authors don't mask out the position embeddings for that particular word because again, the idea is like the model should be able to learn 
the word that occurs by also incorporating the extra information in terms of the position of that element relative to other elements that are there in the document. So this is again something like what bird does, right? So there we don't have a concept of X and Y and bounding box. But the idea is same, right? Where you already freeze in the position and segment embeddings. You're trying to get to the token embedding part of it. So there you're trying to do the fill in the blanks in a linear fashion. Here you're trying to do the fill in the blanks in a 2D fashion. So if this is a document and this is what you have masked based on other positions, other elements to wherever they actually occur, you would want to predict what should come at this X position. That's the goal. And they also initialize the first one as the CLS embedding, which is typical to how again Bird does to get the overall embeddings of the entire document to which they initialize the position embeddings being 0, 0 and the max of X and Y. So once you have the output at this layer, they also add in extra information in terms of how the actual text looks like visually from the original document to which they use faster RCNN model to get embedding representation for each of these small image snippets corresponding to each of these words. So as you can see, right, we have date written in this format. January was underlined. So that is an extra information that we have gotten. So all of this. So they now consider both the embeddings, which is based on layout and the text along with its visual representation, which they use now further for any downstream task. And in terms of getting the better document embeddings, you have already learned a CLS embedding by putting in attention over all the words that are there in its vicinity. To that, you add a CNN based feature for that entire document. And this is what the entire image embedding would be that you can use to do any kind of classification task. Okay, so I guess I missed out like the authors. Okay, yeah. So authors here propose two loss functions where one is based out of the language modeling objective that I just talked about, which is about fill in the blanks in a 2D space. The second is also the classification task. So this is similar to how BERT also works, right? So if this is the input sequence that you give to the BERT, it would mask out, let's say, this word, and this is what it, it will output what the actual word should have been at this place. That's one of the things. But also, if you remember, it also has another loss that's called next sentence prediction or next sequence prediction for that matter, wherein if you have two sentences where you concatenate them based on separator token. Now, the idea is to put a linear layer on top of CLS vector and say whether these two sentences follow each other or not in the original sequence from the entire document. So that's a Boolean classification that you do. So that's in loss one. And then you have loss two coming from MLM. And so that's exactly what they do over here as well. So they kind of pre-train their system on IIT CDIP document collection, which is roughly 15 million documents that are scanned and have an image version of them. But I guess the category goes from like yeah having letters emails invoices news presentation questionnaire resume all of this is like the domain that we have so so the second loss that they introduce is again a classification loss over the cls embedding where for each document they have certain number of labels that is already present in the data set which they use as another signal to kind of fine tune the embeddings that they are learning so again, here the intuition is like having this extra loss term is kind of helping out the model in terms of understanding to associate the labels and kind of cluster the domains and have better representation of the words by also attaching the layout information over there. So this is like a domain classification kind of a thing, right? So if you are dealing with resume, then probably the tags could have been resume, profile, jobs, and all of those could be compared to whatever the tags could have been for, let's say, any research publication. So there is a classification that you're doing in terms of the structure to what these board documents look like as an extra supervision in terms of learning the embeddings. So yeah. Okay. So that's what they've written. You have 2D position embedding, you have image embedding. Then the pre-training language model objective is like masked visual language model. So yeah, instead of calling it as masked language model, what Bird does, since we are also talking about incorporating the layout and the visual version of the token, they call it as masked visual language model. And the second one is multi-label document classification. Cool. So yeah, that's it for this paper, I guess. Then they talk about the experiments. So as I said before, if you're new to this channel, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel and also share it across with your friends. I'll meet you in the next one. Bye-bye and take care.